Encounter is brought to you by the Brim County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning. I'm Jeff Kellum. Welcome to Encounter. A few weeks ago, Sue Spencer was our guest. Sue is the Faith in Action Volunteers Coordinator for the Broome County Council of Churches. And at the end of that program, as we were walking off set, I said, you know, I'm always looking for ideas for, for programs and people to meet and to interview. She said, well, do you know about this warm line? And I've heard about hotlines. I've been doing hotline PSAs for years. But a, a, a warm line? No. What is it? And what's it for? So she connected me with Kim Taro. <laughs> and Kim is with the Sunrise Wellness Center. Yes. And uh, you operate a warm line. And we'll get into the warm line concept okay. in just a minute. But first, tell me a little bit about the Sunrise. Oh, the Sunrise Wellness Center. Um, the Sunrise Wellness Center, it's a program, one of the programs of the Mental Health Association. It's a peer-run program. Um, and what that means is that all of the staff that um, are employed in the center, yeah. we all have our own lived experience, um, meaning that, you know, we might have, we, we've all had mental health challenges and um, face them and um, received help, maybe overcome them. And <clears throat> so what it is, it's peers working with peers and providing so support to individuals. Right. And um, we do a, a lot of different things at the Wellness Center. But one of the, I think the most important thing is that we provide hope to folks. Um, that walk through the door yeah. and it's open to anyone in the community a lot of the people that we serve do have a mental health illness diagnosis but and you know they may be taking medication and seeing a psychiatrist or a doctor but they're also looking for other alternatives um, so we offer different alternatives that just enhance the programs that they, or the services that they already have in place. And, and part of the, the value of that is being in a, having a sense of community, being together, oh, yes. realizing you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one of our goals is to keep people out of the hospital. So it's like a hospital diversion program. It's um, very, you know, self-directed. So we do have people that just walk in the door. We also have folks that are referred by their um, therapists, counselors. Um, and it is, it's a sense of community. We actually, in, we help people integrate back into the community. Um, we address the social inclusion. For a lot of people, um, isolation, it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know from my own experience that there are times when, and have been times in the past when I was so depressed and just I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave my house. So we, um, this is we encourage people to get involved. Um, we we actually do things out in the community as a group. Yeah. We help people. We connect them. Help them connect with their passion. Yeah. You know, what 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 are you passionate about? What gets you up in the morning? Some folks, they might not even they 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 might not remember or, you know, it's been such a long time. So so we. Um, we, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the word. I've well, explored different paths, yeah, help you, them explore different paths. You reconnect folks with a passion, perhaps, that they had at one time in their lives, and then Absolutely. that passion was enshadowed by some mental health issues. Yes, yes. And then they lost track of it. Yes. So one of the things you're doing is to help people think there is a reason to get up in the morning. There is. And there's a reason to leave the house. Yeah. And the first step might be to come to the wellness center. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And to, to realize that they are not by themselves, but are with other people who've experienced not the same things, 
but similar things. And yeah. that's that's it's very empowering. Um, I've you know we've had numerous success stories, um, but we do a lot of education at the wellness center. Uh, we do a lot of education at our agency as a whole, um, but a lot of education. Um, we focus a lot on. Um, well, it, we take a holistic approach. Yeah. You know, we look at the you know the whole body, not just you know the mind. So we we do education on nutrition, um, boundaries. Um, we do a lot with creative expression. Um, we have a lot of folks from different agencies, presenters from the community come in and do presentations. So we do a lot of collaboration and a lot of partnering with other agencies. Mm -hmm. So. Well, so, and, and the, uh, it, this is all part of the Mental Health Association of the Southern Tier, one yes. of its many programs. Yes. And yes. the programs that you offer, let's say that someone um, has wrestled with um, maybe, well, let's say depression, and uh, they're, they're watching this program now or listening to it, and they're thinking, you know, this, they're talking about me. So when they make their way to Court Street, um, I have the, what is the address? 153 Court Street. So they make their way to Court Street, um, and, and they walk in the door. Are they going to have to give you their life history? Are they going to have to connect with their doctors? Do they just walk in and... They just walk in, and they're going to be greeted by um, our administrative assistant, our receptionist. Um, they're, they're going to, they're, they're, it's, we're very welcoming and we are very engaging with individuals, but we meet people where they're at and that is so important. Um, you know, they tell us, they disclose as much information to us as they want to. And I have to tell you, because of the stigma around mental illness, sometimes it's very difficult for folks to walk through that door. Yeah. Um, so oftentimes we will meet individuals out in the community and make that first connection. Um, because that, that making that connection is that can make or break sometimes you know and so for like i said sometimes it's just very difficult for people to come through the door so oftentimes they'll call us on the warm line right. and to make the connection it, they feel a little bit safer let's talk about the warm line okay uh, we know a hotline is something you call in, in a time of emergency um, when there's uh, an experience going on that you can't deal with, so you have that hotline phone number there. Um, but yours is a warm line. It's not really for emergencies. It's just for when it's needed. It's just there. It is. It's it's there for support. Yeah. It's also there for um, information, um, referrals, um, just some uh, a number to call if somebody just needs to talk just needs to chat, and the needs number, some support. The peer support line, I like warm line better, but that, the peer support line is 607-240-7291. So yes. 607-240-7291. We'll give that out a couple of times. And the hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30, pretty much business hours. Yes. And then Saturday and Sunday from 12 noon to 8. Yes. And hopefully in the um, future, um, we'll be able to provide this service um, more often. We're, we really hope to be able to provide it at some point 24-7. So if I call that number, who am I going to talk to? You're either going to talk to staff, one of the staff from the Wellness Center, or you're going to talk to um, one of our trained volunteers. We have a small pool. Of volunteers who we train. We um, have a training manual that was developed by the Mental Health Empowerment Project, which is a peer-run agency. They're actually, um, they contract with the state of New York. They do um, a lot of trainings across the state and provide um, a lot of technical assistance. So, um, so our volunteers that uh, that volunteer with the Wellness Center, they do go through this this training um, 
that was developed sure, by Mahat. Sure. And, and, and it's also the volunteers that um, that will be answering the phone sometimes, they also have their own lived experience. So they're peers themselves. Good. That was important as I read, I went to your website, which is um, www.youryourmha.com. Yes. What a memory I have. <laughs> I'm <laughs> reading it off a card over there. <laughs> uh, people can find out more information there at the website, uh, yourmha, mentalhealthassociation.com. Uh, and they'll find not only the warm line, but all the other programs that are offered by, yes. and not only Sunrise, but the other programs as well. Yeah. I found that full of information. And, and a couple of things st struck me. One was the peer um, support. And we should talk about what peer support means. And then the other piece was self-directed. So this is really um, people being given the handles with which they can help themselves. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and being helped by folks who have also helped themselves. So tell me about the strength of the peer uh, section of this program. The, how, how powerful is that? Oh, gosh. Um, extremely powerful. I, it, well, it, it certainly helped me save my life, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I am a person that lives with bipolar disorder, um, and I'm also a trauma survivor. And <clears throat> when, I, uh, when I first got sick, I knew nothing about peer support, nothing. And I was in my 40s when I had my first psychiatric hospitalization, and within six months I had four hospitalizations and it was during that time that um, I started to learn about peer support. Um, I, during one of my hospitalizations, I was let go. I was terminated from my position mm -hmm. um, that, that I was in at that time. And I was, I was really quite ill. I wasn't able to work for a couple of years. And when I did Finally, when I was able to work, um, I started working as a peer advocate in a drop-in center mm. for another agency, another human services agency. And that really is where I learned all about peer support and, and the value of it. And it's, um, what it is, it's that, it's that mutuality, yeah. you know, it's that, that common ground. Um, there's, one of the things that we do at, at the wellness center is we, we kind of follow, well, not kind of, we follow the intentional <laughs> right. peer support model, right. which is that mutuality, that, um, that common thread. We also know that everybody's worldview is different. So you have to agree to disagree. Uh -huh. And when you're working one-on-one -on -one with individuals, as I said before, you have to you you meet people where they're at, and you have to remember that not everyone is at the same level that you're at, but you're going to help them, and you're going to provide support to them, and and it, it's very non-linear. Everybody's recovery is different, sure. but recovery is possible. And there was a time when people were diagnosed with a mental health. A diagnosis and back like in the 70s 60s 70s you know it was like here you go this is your lot in life and you're never going to work again that's not true it, it seems like the dark ages doesn't it it oh, was only yeah. 30 40 years ago that's right and but we've made great strides absolutely in the 80s and the 90s and the peer movement is strong um and people just they they want more and and I guess that that's what peer support is about, um, helping individuals um, follow their path, supporting them while they're following their right. path, um, providing them with tools that they can use along the way in their everyday wellness and recovery journey. And we all need different tools, um, and and we need those tools at different times. Yep. 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 And one of the things that we help folks do is develop a wellness recovery action plan. And that is um, 
that was developed by Mary Ellen Copeland. Um, and what it is, it's, it's just, it's a plan, and anybody can do a plan for themselves, anyone. And we encourage, I, I encourage anybody to, to, to have a plan. And what it is, it's just a tool, um, and it's when you do it, when you develop this plan, you want to do it when you're feeling okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you just, it, um, there's different steps, you know, to yeah. it. But basically, it's just writing down um, how how when you're feeling good, you know, you're how you you know what's it like when you're feeling good? Um, what what your daily maintenance? What are things that you do every day? Um, when you start, when things start to fall apart, or when things start to break down, what are some of the things that? What are your triggers? 